Hi guys, it's Mr. D here. It's another week of remote learning, which means we're coming to you with another game idea to help you pass the time a little bit that you can play during your PE slot or you can play over the weekend or after school is over, maybe during lunchtime if you finish early. But this game is called Bochi. It is a backyard game. It's a set that you would be purchasing that would have a small ball like this called a Polina or a Jack. And then you would have not one, but two of these Bochi balls. They're a little bit heavier. The Jack has some weight to it itself, the Polina here. And you would actually have two Bochi balls. And there's different color Bochi balls, so more people can play, not just one person. But this is a backyard game, and I will explain the rules a little bit later. But you can actually play this game indoors if you happen to have an indoor bochi set. That would usually be a maybe a fluff ball of some kind or maybe like a hacky sack type ball. And you would be able to play that indoors if you have it. Just make sure if you play this game inside if the weather isn't cooperating and you decide to play the game that you don't break anything. All right, make sure that you aren't using an outdoor backyard set of bochi. It must be an indoor set if you're gonna play inside. We'll get to the rules a little bit later on, but what we're going to do for this instructional video is we're actually going to go over how to properly underhand toss, since that is the skill you're going to use for the game of bochi. And then I will explain the rules of the game a little bit, and I'll actually give you a little bit of a very little bit of variations in different ways to play the game. If you're a soccer player, or maybe if you are a hockey player, you might want to stay and watch for the variations of this game a little bit. But before I begin the instruction portion, I do want to tell you that if you ever get really good at the game of bochi, Olean actually has an annual bochi tournament in the summer at the St. John's Fest. So if you and your friends or maybe a family member get really, really good, maybe you can play in that tournament and maybe you can win the tournament. Who knows? So I'm going to put these away as they are actually more heavy than you would think. And it would not go over well if I was tossing these around the gym floor. So I'm just going to put these on the side and I'm going to back up a little bit. All right. Now for the sake of the game of bochi, I'm actually going to use in here two yarn balls or fluff balls as my bochi balls. And then I'm going to use a bean bag as the Polina or the Jack. The Polina was the little white ball that I had in my hand to begin this lesson. And when we are playing the game, we are working on our underhand toss. So a quick review of the underhand toss goes a little something like this. As you remember, whenever you are throwing or tossing something, you are stepping with your opposite foot. So you noticed when Mr. D was about to throw with his right hand, I took a step with my left leg here, and that's going to be the exact same for the underhand toss. But instead of having it by your ear when you throw and follow through, you're actually gonna have, this is a bean bag here, but whatever you're trying to toss is actually going to start off by your hip or your waist. And as you step, your arm, your throwing arm is going to go back and then it will come forward as you release and your follow through will actually look fairly similar to the overhand throw. You'll stop it right at about your chest. Your fingers should be pointing towards your target. So if you think of your arm as a clock, if you're going to do the overhand throw, generally your arm is going from 3 o'clock up to 12 and to 9 o'clock. But if you're doing the underhand toss, your arm's gonna go from three o'clock to six o'clock and then to nine o'clock. So depending on how you are throwing something, if you think of your arm as a clock, you should be able to figure out what you are going to do and how to be successful with that throw or toss. But I'm going to toss this bean bag towards the bleachers here just to complete this demonstration. So I'm throwing with my right hand, I'm stepping with my left foot 
I'm looking at my target, my left toes point towards my target as I have my follow through here and I toss. Just like that. Step, bring your hand back, toss, follow through, your fingers should point towards your target. So if you need to take a minute or two to practice your underhand toss before you begin bochi, that's up to you. You can have a partner that catches it and then underhand tosses it back. Or if you're in your backyard, you can aim for something like a tree, for example. Toss it at the tree, go get it, and then toss it at something else, just so you can kind of practice your accuracy, because accuracy is important for this game. All right. Now for the instruction and the rules of the game of bochi. As I mentioned a little bit earlier, you're going to have a polina or a jack, which is a little small, a smaller ball that everybody's going to be aiming for. So I'm going to toss this bean bag over here and I'm going to pretend that is the polina right there. Now, if I had some of my friends with me, let's say I only had one partner with me. I tossed the polina or the jack, so in the rules, I would toss first and again, if you remember, I have two bochi balls or yarn balls for this instance in my hand. I would underhand toss one, and the object of this game is to have your bochi ball the closest to that polina, or for this instance, again, the bean bag. That is how you would earn points. After I toss my first throw, my partner, my imaginary partner here would toss, after they tossed their first throw, it would be my turn to toss again. Now, I noticed that my bochi ball, my yarn ball, actually rolled a little bit too far, so I might have put a little bit too much power into my toss, so there's strategy involved with this game. So maybe I want to toss it a little bit lighter to see if I can get it a little bit closer. As you can see, I did a much better job there. And then my partner, again, would toss their last bochi ball. And then that's the end of the round. You would go over, you would check to see who won the round, you would pick up the polina and the bochi balls, and then the next person would toss to a different spot, and you would play a second round. Now, how scoring works in the game of bochi. If your, one of your bochi balls are the closest to the polina, you earn one point, but you actually have a chance of getting both of your bochi balls closer to the polina than your partner's bochi balls. If that ever happens, you actually earn two points. The winner of the round always tosses the polina next, and then they would lead off with the toss of the bochi ball as well. So the winner always leads off the next round. How this game works, you can pick how many rounds you want to play. You can pick a score, maybe first team to 11 or first person to 11 wins. And you can have a lot of fun with this game. It can be a very quick game or it can take a little bit of time. But before I move on to the variations, I just wanted to explain something to you. So let's say the Polina's right there and the balls were tossed and I didn't know which bochi ball was closest to the polina. In this instance, you'd have to do a measurement. That's how the official game works. So whether you had a ruler or a met some measuring tape, I know my family, all we do is we put one foot, we, have a, we pick a measure, and we just take one step, make sure our feet connect, and we count how many steps it takes to get to the polina. And whoever has less steps would win. So if you look, the green bochi ball was actually about a foot and a quarter, whereas the purple bochi ball was a foot and a half. So the, whoever had the green bochi ball set would be the winner of this round. But in case you ever run into that issue, that is how you would measure to declare the winner of the round. And the winner, of course, gets to toss the polina and gets the first toss of the bochi ball. Now, some variations to this game. If the polina was out there, for example, and maybe we have, we're out in an open space, we have a big backyard or a big side yard, or maybe we have, we're at the park. Baseball and softball players, if you want to, you can work on your underhand toss while using that sport ball, or maybe if it's a really far distance, you can even 
over and throw it towards the Polina. So there's a variation there. If it's a long distance one and you have a lot of baseball, softball players, you can use the baseball and softball. Just make sure you have two baseballs or two softballs as you play this game. Let's say you are a hockey player and maybe you are out on your driveway and maybe you have a rubber ball, a street hockey ball, for example, and you want to play this game with your friends. You would send out the Polina or maybe the one street hockey ball, and then you would take turns passing towards the Polina, just like Mr. D just showed. Now remember, this is for pillow polo, but hockey it works the same. When it's your turn, you want to step towards your target, point your opposite toe, since I'm holding it and I'm using my right hand to push the pass, step with my left foot and pass it towards the Polina there. Maybe we have one more variation. Maybe we have some soccer players and some athletes that like to play soccer. Feel free to grab two soccer balls and pass the ball towards the target, towards the Polina. So you can play outdoor bochi many different ways with many different sports balls however you would like to do it now if you notice in the gym on a hardwood floor the ball will continue to roll a little bit more than you would like so if you are outside the game will probably go a little bit better because that grass will naturally begin to slow down the force of your toss and will stop whatever ball you're using a little bit quicker but boys and girls here is this week's lesson. I taught you the game of bochi, and I gave you some variations to the game. We did a little bit of instruction so you can practice your underhand tosses. And I even gave you a little hint and a little idea if you ever get really good at the game and you want to go out onto, into, this town of Ol into the city of Olean and try to compete against other bochi players. The St. John's Fest always has a bochi ball tournament. I hope you guys are all still staying well and staying safe and staying healthy. Keep on working hard and getting good grades, and we hope to see you soon. Have a great rest of your week, guys. Bye-bye.